So, which printer should you buy? The Bamboo Lab A1, which is behind me there, or the Bamboo Lab P1S? Now, I've been using both of these printers now for a good couple of months, and hopefully in this video I'll be able to answer which one maybe you should be going for, depending on what your circumstances are, and just some of my opinions on those. Now, I'm not going to do a super technical deep dive into this. This is going to be more about the surface level stuff and my experience of using these to get loads of stuff printed off. And I've been using them pretty much every single day now since I've got them. So I've got a pretty good handle on how these things perform. Just one quick note, these machines haven't been sent to me. This isn't a sponsored video, but I bought them all myself. So just to clear that one up. Now, in an unusual YouTube fashion, I'm going to give you my conclusion first about which one of these to go for, and then I'll do a bit more of a deep dive into this to explain my reasons why. So if you're the kind of person who wants something that doesn't look like this standard traditional 3D printer, it's got curb appeal, it's got spouse appeal, and you want to be able to print off with a larger range of materials, then the P1S is going to be the one to go for. If you've got little fiddly hands around from children, or you've got animals, for example, that might climb onto your print bed, then having that enclosure on the P1S is really nice. It looks nice, it doesn't stand out like a sore thumb, and it doesn't look like a traditional 3D printer. If you're the kind of person like myself who is pretty much just printing exclusively in PLA, then the A1 is just as good as the P1S, although a tiny bit slower. So that's a very initial conclusion, but let's get on to the full video and go through some of my reasons why. I'll do my best to have everything timestamped below, so if there's something in particular you want to find out, then hopefully you can skip to that. So first up, let's talk about the look of these two devices, and they do look very, very different. So the P1S is a fully enclosed device. It looks really nice. It takes a very little space in the grand scheme of things, and it doesn't stand out as your traditional type of 3D printer. If you're also looking to get something like the AMS for your multicolor printing, then it sits very nicely on top of the P1S. In comparison to something like the Bamboo Lab A1, which looks very much like your traditional 3D printer, when you pair that up with the AMS Lite, you can't put it on top. Well, you can, there's a 3D printed attachment you can get, but personally, I wouldn't trust that because there's going to be a lot of vibrations. And if it does break, it's going to crush your printer and probably break the AMS. It doesn't take up a huge amount, but in comparison to something like the P1S, which looks sleek and fits nicely, having that paired up with the AMS takes up a lot less space. So one major difference between these two devices is that the A1 has this awesome little screen. It's really clear, it's bright, it's easy to interact with, whereas the P1S has this shrunken down little Kindle. Now at first, this didn't bother me too much when I was exclusively using my P1S. I never really interacted with it that much using the screen because they do such a good job of using the Bamboo Handy app on your phone or the Bamboo Studio app on your PC or your MacBook. You get absolutely loads of functionality through that app and it's really, really handy to use and I've had no problems with it. But when I got the A1 and saw the little screen on it, it became so much easier just to interact with the printer. It's things like reprinting a print after it's run off, finding out anything that's wrong with the maintenance side of things. So if there's a clog, for example, or there's something wrong with the AMS, for example, it tells me all of that actually on the screen rather than having to go off onto the application to pull up that information. Now, granted, you can get that sort of information on the tiny little Kindle screen, but it is so much nicer on the A1. So that's a clear win here. Next up, let's talk about the print quality on these devices, because that's the thing you're probably most concerned about. Now, when it comes to using these devices for printing, I found pretty much no difference at all between these. The print quality on both machines is absolutely superb. And when it comes to doing any big print jobs, for example, I'm doing this like cemetery terrain at the moment for a war cry project. I run all of it on all of my printers at the same time. So I use the A1 and the P1S and I just chop and change between them. So they're all printing basically the same terrain. And I've noticed absolutely no difference between these when it comes to quality. These walls, for example, one of them was printed on the A1, one of them is printed on the P1. And can you tell any difference between it? I personally can't. They look almost identical when it comes to it. So the print quality is pretty much exactly the same between both devices. But one thing to bear in mind that I have experienced is the A1 is about 10 to 15% slower than something like the P1S. Now that could be down to things like my settings, although I use pretty much exactly the same settings between these two devices. But on average, it is about 10 to 15% slower. So speed is your absolute number one priority and you want something that's going to print off a really high quality very, very quickly, then the P1S is the faster out of the machines. However, quality is pretty much exactly the same between them and I've noticed no difference between them. When it comes to the reliability of the prints as well, I've noticed no difference there. I've not had any more failures or successes on one of the machines. They both perform pretty much exactly the same. One thing to bear in mind though is the type of material you're going to be using. If you're going to be using PLA, PETG, TPU or PVA, then the A1 is going to be perfectly fine for you. However, if you want to use a larger range of materials, so say for example you want to print off an ABS, then you're going to need something like the P1S. Unfortunately, the A1 is not going to handle those, so it is worthwhile bearing in mind and considering what sort of materials you want to print with in the future, 
And if you are going to be using something that's going to be a little bit more advanced or different than something like PLA that I personally just use, then you might want to invest in something like the P1P or the P1S. Next up is maintaining these devices. And in my experience, they're both pretty much the same when it comes to fixing things or figuring out what's going wrong. Bamboo Lab do a pretty good job of demonstrating how to fix these machines if anything goes wrong on their website. You've got some really good videos and there's some great picture walkthroughs as well. And of course on both devices I have had issues because I've been printing pretty much daily now for months. On both of them I've had clogging with the gears, so that involves taking apart the hot end and basically getting down to where the gears are, taking them out and giving them a good clean. And both devices, it's very, very similar to get fixed. Now, the one thing that I really like about the P1S is it has this magnetic front cover which you basically just pop off. On the A1, I'm not too keen on it because it's this little plastic shield and you've kind of got to squeeze it from both sides and then it releases from the front. But I do wonder how long that's going to last before one of these little plastic clip bits goes like pinging across the room. However, when it comes to basically getting down to things like the gears and giving you a good clean, it's really easy to do. Basically, unscrew a few bits and you can very quickly take apart that hot end and get into the extruder and get everything cleaned up. I've had to do it on both devices now and neither one of them is easier than the other. When it comes to changing that nozzle, and if you're switching between like a 0.2 millimeter nozzle, 0.4, 0.8, whatever it is that you're printing in, they're both really easy to swap out. Now, when I first got the P1S, I was incredibly impressed by how easy it is to swap out that hot end. You literally unscrew a couple of bits, pop off some of the cables, and then pop the new one in. And it takes about five minutes all in all to get that swapped over. On the A1, I was even more impressed by that. There's literally a little clip, you slide it out, slide the new one in, and it is that simple. At first, I thought you had to unscrew these two screws just above the nozzle, but apparently you don't even need to do that. Literally takes about 30 seconds to swap a nozzle over on the A1, so if you are swapping between different nozzle sizes, the A1 is crazy easy to swap them out on. Now, I'm sure there's going to be other deeper dive things that I'm going to need to fix in the future, like when I get 9 or 12 months into ownership of both of these devices, but so far I've not encountered either of those. So I would say that they're both very similar when it comes to maintenance, very easy to maintain, and some good guides as well. Now, I've not had to go really digging down in the P1S, and that might become a bit of an issue later because everything is obviously in that enclosure, so you might need to unscrew a few more bits. Whereas on the A1, everything's kind of more accessible. I don't know how much of an issue that's going to be, but just something to think about. Next is a quality of life. And one thing that they advertise on the A1 is that silent printing. Now, neither one of these machines is silent by a long shot, but the A1 is a little bit quieter than the P1S. The P1S sounds like a toddler in a box that's been given loads of sugar. It just, it's a really loud machine, especially when it first starts printing off. Now, I've gotten used to it, and they have launched a software update similar to what the A1 advertises, where it'll do like vibration compensation and everything else. So it has gotten quieter than when I first did my P1S initial videos, but the A1 is slightly quieter. The problem with the A1 is it's a far less consistent level of noise, so for the most part, it's pretty quiet. But then when its fan kicks in, it sounds really high pitched and loud, and you can absolutely hear it. It doesn't go on for a massive length of time, which is really nice, but it does sometimes just kick in and it'll like scare the hell out of me. However, if I absolutely had to choose which one is quieter and which one is less annoying, I would say the A1 is a little bit quieter than something like the P1S. Next up is the camera, and if you like a potato that also doubles up as the camera, then the A1 has you covered. Now, let me be clear, neither camera is superb on either of these machines, but I think down to the positioning of the camera on the A1, it just looks a hell of a lot worse. Basically, it's pointed at a weird angle, and because it's not in an enclosure to basically capture the light, it's affected by everything around it, and everything looks ever so slightly warped. It's about usable if you want to check in on a print and make sure it's not failing, and you can get some interesting time lapses, but all in all, the camera on the P1S just performs a lot better in my experience. The next one is a real interesting one, and that's that the A1 flings its poop, whereas the P1S poops down a chute instead. Now, neither one of them is a tidy machine, I guess. Now, how it works is when you're doing any color changes, for example, using the AMS, when it's basically getting going and it's having to do some extrusion, it does it into this kind of like little mechanism on the side of it, and then it flings the poop out the side. Whereas on the P1S, it does it all inside of it, and there's this like little chute down the back of it, and it just drops down the back. So it's easier to capture all of that filament poop on something like the P1S. Whereas on the A1, mine just shoots it at the P1S because it's got something next to it. So you'd need to get something that's going to catch that poop, or maybe something to like fling it against, and then it drops down like I'm doing. It's not the end of the world on the A1, it's just something to consider that wherever you put it, you're also going to want to try and get something to capture that poop as it drops out. And one of the final things when it comes to quality of life is that the P1S is in a full enclosure. Now, the benefit of something like this is if you have children 
or if you have cats or other animals, for example, that are going to get a little bit fiddly sometimes when they see something that's hot and warm and they want to play with something that's moving around, it's easier to protect your print when it's in the P1S. A cat is probably not going to open that door up, although it might do, and a toddler might do as well, but it's certainly a little bit safer. Having something that's just on a print bed that's moving around, cats are going to find that warm and want to sleep on it, kids are maybe going to want to play with whatever's printing off as well. So the A1 is, in my opinion, just a little bit more dangerous depending on who else occupies your house, whereas the P1S, because it's all nice and closed, it's just harder to get to. Also, because it's in that enclosure as well, depending where you put your printer, if it's drafty, for example, or prone to temperature swings, then the A1 is going to be more likely to have failed prints versus something like the P1S, which will help to maintain that temperature inside of the enclosure. I've not had any issues with my A1, but then this room is at a pretty consistent temperature, so it's hard to kind of gauge how much of an issue that would be. Next up is the AMS. Now, the AMS is a really interesting one. So for the P1S and the P1P and basically the premium machines, you have your standard AMS unit, which is this really nice looking enclosed unit. It helps to protect against things like humidity and any moisture getting in there as well. Whereas on the AMS light, it's this other type of unit where everything's on the external, it has to be hooked up alongside, or the, like I mentioned at the start, you can put it on top, but I personally wouldn't risk it. And they are very different looking, but they perform exactly the same. I've noticed no difference in terms of the quality of the prints that I get either on my standard AMS or on the AMS light, but personally, I prefer the AMS light system. Now, I mentioned in my A1 impressions video that you couldn't use cardboard spools in the AMS system, and you can do that if you want to, and you don't need to use anything extra like the adapters, but Bamboo Lab don't recommend it. It's one of the reasons why I didn't recommend it in the video. And I do sometimes do it with like no protection on the cardboard spools, and I find little bits of cardboard gradually building up inside the AMS gears. So it's just something to be mindful of. You will need to do a little bit more cleaning if you do that. Now you can get lots of different like adapters that clip onto the cardboard spools and you can get all sorts of other things to get around it. But it is one of the reasons why I prefer the AMS light system because everything's just easier to use. You can use pretty much any type of spools, any size spools as well. You don't have to worry about the cardboard or plastic. Everything just clips onto these like little prongs that hold it together nicely. Another thing is that the AMS light has everything externally. And what I mean by that is it has all the tubes external, it's easy to fix. So if something snaps inside one of those tubes, for example, and you've got to get in there, find where the snap is and where the clog is, it's really easy to do it on that. On the standard AMS system, you've got to unscrew some bits inside on this panel, pop out the internal panel, unclip a couple of cables as well to make sure you don't snap one of those in the process. Then you've got to take your tubes out and then find the blockage. It doesn't take a huge amount, and once you get used to it, it's pretty quick but there's definitely a lot more involvement when it comes to fixing things on the AMS system versus something like the AMS light system. Big downside, however, of the AMS light system is just the size it takes and also its look. It does look clunky and it looks odd when you have it in a room, for example. You've got all these big cables coming off it and all the tubes and everything else going into the system. So the AMS system looks far nicer with the P1S versus something like the AMS light system. And like I mentioned as well, because you've got that enclosed box with the standard AMS, you are helping to protect against humidity or any moisture getting into your filament versus something like the AMS light system where everything's on the external. So if you've got humidity in your room, it is going to be more prone to getting into that filament and potentially causing some issues. Another downside just to note with the AMS light is that you can't have multiple of them. With the standard AMS machine, you can hook up a whole bunch of them to something like the P1S or a P1P. So if you want to have more than four colors, you can do. With the AMS light, unfortunately, there's no way of doing that. So if you are looking to print in more than four colors, you're not going to be able to do that on something like the A1 and the AMS light. So the question at the end of that is which one should you get? And that all depends on who you are and what you're using it for. If you want something that's sleek, looks good, it doesn't stand out as a 3D printer, and it offers more compatibility with different types of materials, then the P1S is probably the one to go for. If, however, you're like me and you're just printing off in standard FDM and you just want something that's going to be fast, give really good quality prints, then honestly the A1 is really, really hard to argue with. Personally, in hindsight, although I absolutely love my P1S machines, if the A1 had been available when I got into this and started doing my FDM printing, I would have probably ended up with three of those instead. I love the quality of these things. It basically gives me the exact same quality as my P1S, a tiny bit slower, and all in all, I've had barely any issues at all with the A1. I really do like the P1S as well though. It is a really nice fast machine. It looks great. And if I was only gonna have one printer in the house and I didn't necessarily have a dedicated space for it, 
probably would be the P1S that I'd recommend because it just looks a little bit nicer and it also takes up a little bit less space as well in comparison to the A1 machine if you're pairing them both with an AMS system. So hopefully that helps you in your buying decision and deciding which one of these machines you're going to go for. If you've got any questions, throw them down in the comments below. And if I've missed anything else as well that you think is an important thing to help in the buying decision, then throw that down there too. This is just my experience and the things that I'm using it for. I'm a tabletop gamer. I print a lot of terrain. I also print off loads of other random things like different shelves and bits to go around my office to help with my hobby addiction. And these machines are fantastic. It's really, really hard to recommend either one of these and it depends on your use case. So ultimately only you can make that decision, but you can't really go too far wrong. Now I'm gonna throw one final spanner in the work and say that the A1 Mini might also be something worthwhile considering. Now I've personally not used it, but apparently it gets the exact same print quality as the A1 and the P1S. And if you're printing things like this, like little bits of terrain, then that's gonna fit on that print bed. The print bed on the P1S and the A1 is the exact same size, and the A1 Mini is a little bit smaller, but it would be perfectly fine for things like terrain. So if you want multicolor printing terrain or fast printing, then the A1 Mini might also be one to consider for you guys. So thanks for watching that video. And before we sign off, if you want to get anything like this, which has been sent over to me by Into the AM, then head on over to the link in my description where you can also get a discount as well. They do loads of funky merch and they sent me over a few t-shirts to try on. And I like them, they stand out. And it's definitely better than all the jumpers that I normally wear when I'm doing these videos. So head on over to the link in the description and grab yourself some interesting merch. So thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed that video. If you've got any questions, like I said, throw them into the comments or head on over to my Discord channel where you can chat all things hobby and printing and all of that jazz. And fingers crossed, I'll see you in the next one. Take care and I'll see you soon. Bye.